Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Cradle. Today in this video we will discuss about what is the future of data science and I've been getting this question quite a lot and it's a valid question. It was a hottest job in 2018 so everybody wanted to be a data scientist and they wanted to get into data science. So why within just five, six years, why people started questioning what is the future of data science? So there are a lot of things which has been changed mainly because of intervention of AI and a few other factors. So we will talk about all those things in this video and I will try to give you a clear picture. What is the future of data science? This is purely from my perspective. There could be a lot of other factors as well. So if you think that could play a role, do let us know in the in the comments. So I will be looking forward to those comments. Now, with that being said, let's start our video. But uh, as always, if you are new here or if you subscribe to the channel, please go subscribe to the channel and be a part of the programming creator family. Hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time when a video goes live. And if you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. It keeps you motivated to make such videos for you guys. And if you want to have one to one conversation with me, you can book a one to one session. Link will be in the description. And uh, also, if you want to join our live Q&A, you can join every Saturday 12 p.m. UK time. So with that being said, yeah, let's start our discussion. So the first point is AI. So because of these large language models, a lot of things have become quite easy. You can literally create any kind of application, any kind of analysis using chat GPT or BARD. They do pretty good but the thing about that is it does not have any kind of intuition which a data scientist would have they can create a section of code but they can't create a full-fledged application there are some uh, packages and apis built on uh, large language models they can do that but still it will need quite a lot of uh, human expertise you will be able to create those modules and it will work just fine but then if there is an error it will take quite a lot of time to debug that and if you are not expert in a particular programming language or if you are not clear with your own concepts you won't be able to debug those and that's where there will be a lot of performance issues if you are not able to do those things properly and if you're just using those large language models so I strongly believe that uh, when you are creating a data pipeline or a data science analysis, yes, AI can help you in those kind of things, but they cannot replace you at this point. Maybe in like three, four years, yes, they will replace us. Uh, but uh, as of now, uh, I think you are still safe. You don't really need to take AI as a competition. What I would say is you need to make it your assistant. So instead of seeing it as your competition see it as your assistant and try to use it as much as you can to your own benefit and to speed up your process of building any kind of application so that is the first point the next direction in which uh, data science is moving is software development so probably four or five years back you would say software development was completely different thing and data science was completely different thing but now you would have seen ml ops probably in past three four years mlops have become quite important it is a modification of devops so now what you need to do is if you just know python if you just know data analysis tools and if you just know machine learning and deep learning it's not enough you need to know other things like deployment part using kubernetes uh, git and a lot of other tools which are being used in the industry and when you go for any job interviews or something like that, they do ask that, do you have experience in deploying these machine learning models into production? Because 80% of the time when you train a machine learning model on your local system and when you put it in the production, 80% of the time, usually the models fail because of various kind of bias, variance, maybe outlier, the data was not clean or you have cleaned the data but then the data which is coming in production it is a completely mess so there are a lot of different factors because of which a model can fail there are a lot of performance implications you have created a model but it is huge and uh, you need that model to predict something in a less time but it is taking ages to predict something so it hinders the uh, it hinders the user experience so you need to keep those things in mind so what i think is in future after let's say 
I won't say two, three years because it can happen and it is already happening that software development and uh, data science, these both jobs are getting merged. And now there are a lot of companies, they say that they hire for a software developer, but then they specifically look for machine learning uh, knowledge in, in the candidate. So companies like Amazon, Google, so even if they're hiring for a software developer, they do expect you to know all those data, uh, data literacy and also you need to understand machine learning quite well. And again, in, in, in the job market, when I see various kind of software developer roles, they are mentioning that they need uh, machine learning knowledge, they need that data analysis knowledge. And then when I see some of the data science jobs, again, they are saying that they want you to understand uh, the best practices of a particular programming language. They want to understand how to use Git so that you can work in collaboration. They want to, uh, they want you to know Docker. They want you to know Kubernetes. There are a lot of different uh, tools and technologies that are being used in software development. And uh, also, um, it's not like I told you, um, code quality is very important and uh, object oriented programming i created a short video probably a year back where i talked about that if you are a fresher if you're just getting into uh, data science you don't really need to know uh, object oriented programming because you will be creating a lot of models and you will be doing quite a lot of data analysis on your local system and then the production team will take care of all those converting from research phase to the deployment phase but now the things are changing quite fast and within just a year. Now, I strongly believe that it's important for you to start understanding object oriented programming and uh, start to implement your program, start to implement your code in more of a production quality level. And you should not just focus on research level where you make like 10 15 models and you see which one is working best hyperparameter tuning and those kind of things yes you will still be doing those kind of things and it's fine you can do it in your jupyter notebook and i think you should do it in jupyter notebook is because that is the more friendlier way to explore different kind of models but you should also know how to put those models into deployment so that is going to play a vital role in how secure you are in your job so these are the two things which I think can affect the future of data science and the kind of a direction I can see data science jobs are going into. I hope you found this video helpful and if you think there are other factors do let me know in the comment section. I would really like to see what other factors could be there and uh, if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel it's completely free for you but it does help me it uh, helps me in YouTube algorithm side and again it keeps me motivated to create these kind of videos for you guys and again you can join me on in live Q&A every Saturday at 12 p.m. UK time and if you have if you want to have one-to-one -one session either you can join uh, the channel membership or you can follow the link which is provided in the description so yeah uh, with that being said I will see you guys in the next video happy learning